down and we're beating Obama and the globalists on gutting our borders and creating a North American Union. We're beating them on their attempt to take our guns. We are beating them on so many fronts and we will abolish the offshore Federal Reserve. We will kick the Rothschilds and Rockefellers out of this country, out of our banking system. We will restore the republic. Now, we're going to go to your phone calls here in a few minutes. Adam Kokeshi is on now. And uh, this happened on the 4th of July. He went ahead with his armed march on D.C. There between uh, the Capitol and the White House. Got out there in the morning. Loaded the shotgun up, in his words, in a text to me, saying he committed four felonies. Uh, the issue here is the Supreme Court five years ago overthrew the ban on shotguns and handguns for citizens. But just like courts have ordered Fast and Furious, the Justice Department to answer questions, they haven't done it in several years. And now in the latest ruling, six months. They are lawless. This is like Rosa Parks saying, I'm not going to sit at the back of the bus anymore. I'm going to sit up at the front where the air conditioning's at. It's because I'm black. Doesn't mean I'm a second-class citizen. And D.C., the government has its guns. It's got its helicopters and rocket launchers. But you can't have a gun. So you can live in one of the highest crime rates in the country, just like Chicago, where they've taken the citizens' guns. And so he sent me a text right after it went live. I mean, he sent me the text. I looked at it. It had like 20 views on YouTube when he sent it to me. It, I saw it that morning. I called him, and he said, I'm not ready to come on right now. I'll talk to you next week. So he's given us the first interview right now. And you can say what you want about him. But he's going straight into the wind on this, and that's how you make history. Uh, he's not closing his eyes in the face of adversity. Uh, and he is standing up for our civil and God-given and, and just unalienable, unalienable basic human rights. And it's easy to say, you know, should he do an armed march? Should he do an armed march? Shouldn't he? The point is you have a right. You can debate whether it's a good idea or a bad idea. But you cannot debate that he has courage and that he has a right to do it. The question is, is now the time to call these people on their criminality? And I think that's open for debate. But Adam has caused a debate, as I said Friday with Jakari Jackson, and has contributed to it, and, and our listeners have contributed as well, uh, to coming to that clarion call of a new Paul Revere. All of us are Paul Revere's, of every race, color, creed, sex, you name it. There were marches in all 50 states. Some of them had thousands of people. I think conservatively, there were probably 800 people from the news report Jakari Jackson filed at the Texas Capitol. And it was the impetus, the idea of Adam Kokesh on the 4th to march for the Second Amendment that then even turned into an NSA protest in many states. So big, big things have small beginnings. Let's go to this clip of his civil disobedience against the incredible tyranny of the foreign banks that have occupied D.C. Here it is. We will not be silent. We will not obey. We will not allow our government to destroy our humanity. We are the final American revolution. See you next Independence Day. I love the name of the square where he did this, too, to point out the Orwellian bizarreness of this. Uh, Adam, uh, thank you for coming on with us. It's been about four days since you did this. Uh, and for those that live in freer areas, it doesn't seem like a big deal. Uh, Mordor has announced they're planning to come after you. Uh, it's been a big national story. Thank you for joining us. Tell us uh, uh, the details, where this is going. Well, Alex, I really appreciate that introduction. It's my pleasure to come on. This is the first formal interview uh, that I've done since uh, the event, and I'm, I'm more than happy to, to give this to you first because you've, you've been so supportive in this. But I, I want to draw a comparison with Rosa Parks, as you have, and, and I'm, I'm greatly honored by that, and the significance of, of her single act of civil disobedience uh, really can't be measured. And, and, and I hope that, that in my lifetime I might have a, a similar impact but you also made the comparison to Paul Revere. So if I may, the events that, that took place this past Independence Day with, as you pointed out, thousands marching throughout the country uh, were about a lot more than the Second Amendment or the Fourth Amendment or the NSA or, or gun rights in general. It was very specifically a call to overthrow the United States federal government. And I think that we have come to the point where we can get a critical mass of Americans to realize that we'd be better off without it than with it. And Rosa Parks, when she went to the front of the bus, it wasn't, well, I think the government should be able to, to say who should be able to sit at the front of the bus, but it should only be white people and black people. Screw yellow people and red people and forget about them. No, it was, 
We are independent human beings and we have inherent rights based on that that are absolutely universal. And I know that you're very well committed to that cause. But similarly with Paul Revere, if you want to take the call that I'm putting out for this, it's not to restore the republic. And, and I feel like I have a much more important mission right now during this interview with you today, sir, uh, than, than to spread the message about what, what happened on Independence Day, but to convince you of the appropriate course of action moving forward because your audience and yourself have so much respect and, and, and carry so much power in this United States national conversation right now. And if, if we say, well, we have these rights, but we're going to restore the republic, we're going to be repeating the mistakes of the past by creating a central authority that is based on democratic concepts. All right, but listen, listen, I, I want to get into that with you. And I want you to be able to say your piece. But for me, uh, and I've had a lot of constitutional lawyers like Edwin Vieira and, and, and countless others on, who, who, who agree that what I'm saying is how the Declaration of Independence, Bill of Rights and Constitution, we don't even have a federal government. It's a foreign banking cartel. Sure, and sure. if we point that out, then it's totally illegitimate and people get it. And I think it's going to be easier to at least restore the classic republic that's a million times better than the new world order we've got than just saying let's overthrow the federal government it's not even the federal government the federal reserve is not federal this sure. is an alien globalist corporate kleptocracy in europe they brag that private banks have seized the countries so my issue is i support you defending the individual right to bear arms but I'm even giving you the legal argument the way that you probably win in court if they come after you instead of just saying, I see you all as illegitimate criminals. I, I respect what you're saying. I respect the whole, an, you know, uh, the anarchic capitalist, uh, hyper libertarian, whatever you want to call yourself view. I get that. I'm mm -hmm. simply saying that 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 I think you have a lot of courage. This is a, you know, overall a very positive thing you did. It was your individual choice. It didn't endanger a whole bunch of other people. So I wanted to speak specifically about that, and then you can give us your view. But but when you say a revolution, I want to have a psychological, uh, cultural revolution Absolutely. against the globalist. So first, first define your revolution and what you're saying, and then let's get back to you locking and loading uh, with the 12 gauge there in D.C. Sure, Alex, I appreciate that. And, and, and the, the revolution in the bigger picture, in the longer term, I'm absolutely with you. It's the paradigm shift. It's, the, it's not the revolution. It's the evolution that people are going through of, of realizing that they have these rights. But the American founders, would, would you be the one telling them, oh, you shouldn't really shoot back at the king's soldiers. You should go send an emissary to King George and plead in his court for forgiveness. And, and you should plead for independence. No, the, the, the time then was to take a, a specific radical action. And, and it, fortunately, in this day and age, violence is not required to achieve that. But we're not going to achieve this through democracy, through the voting process, through the courts. Well, You're I'll tell you this. If we, saw, the man. if we saw 20-something governors and former senators and Ron Paul and people I respect meeting in public, like in Philadelphia again, and then I heard ideas and saw plans that were sent to the states. You got to have some organization. Well, no, let me ask you a question, mm -hmm. Alex, because you talk about these rights, and it's very important to understand what these rights are. And again, going back to Rosa Parks, what she was protesting for was not for specific privileges under an existing system. She was protesting for rights. And that's what I'm talking about here. You don't have a right under any system in, in the world to choose a leader for anyone else. That is fundamentally immoral. That is what the real immediate revolution that is happening. No, in the I get world it. This is, is a right total. This you, is a want to, you want to restore the republic, you're still going to have other people choosing a leader for me, and I reject that. But I see this in steps. I want to kick the New World Order out and expose their eugenics agenda and bring them to justice. And then out of that great victory, we could build an open, more free society. Okay, so I, I agree with a lot of your basic ideas and a lot of the, you know, hyper-libertarian ideas that I think were expressed by Thomas Jefferson more eloquently than I can do 200-plus years ago. I'm saying the globalists actually like revolutions because they can steer them into larger crises, and, and uh, that's, that's why what, I think people well, have that's trepidation. Why, that's, that's why specifically the what, what we are calling for here is an orderly, peaceful 
dissolution of the federal government, not not anything chaotic, which is what we face if we don't do anything or if we take these half measures. And with all due respect, sir, I believe that what you're calling for is the definition of insanity of trying the same thing over and expecting different results. And we can't fight inch by inch anymore because you, you take an inch and they're going to take a mile behind your back and laugh at you while they're doing it. And we have to get a critical mass of public support on our side. And you're not going to get a critical mass of, of public support saying, well, let's change this law or let's tweak this. Or well, let's I'll say this. I know a lot of government people that, that, that want to have some big showdown. And I, historically, we're winning in the awakening process. Absolutely. And and I, I think this baby is five months pregnant. I, my gut tells me, and people say, oh, you just say that because you're a popular talk show host and have stuff to lose. That's not true, folks. I go out and give speeches to thousands of people without bodyguards. I'm out in the open. I just, just I mean, you're saying, let's have the revolution they're all set up to try to have a civil war instead of a restoration of any type of freedom. And I believe the, 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 the system of the Declaration of Independence that says it's our right, it's our duty to abolish forms that are abusive and set up new ones. Obviously, if we've got 101 million people on, on welfare in the U.S. right now, these people don't even know how to wipe their own hind ends, much less live in the society you're talking about. It's like Ron Paul said, America is in a coma. It's going to well, take time Alex, to get Alex, us out of exactly. this. Well, in a sense, I feel like I'm the moderate here because what I'm suggesting is that we maintain the state governments as they are. And what I'm suggesting specifically as a form for this revolution, this specific step that I think we can demand, that I think we can get a critical mass of people from uh, behind, is to restore the authority of the states, to go back to having independent, truly autonomous states. And this is something that can really unite people. See, there's a problem, Alex, when you say, let's have a republic, let's restore the republic, let's have this vision on the national level. It's one person's specific, particular vision. And if a lot of people share it, fine, but it's gonna be forced on the entire country. But if you if you break it down at the state level, you can tell everyone. No, I, no what? that's what I called for last year. I, I called for a new Continental Congress and the states to decide what we wanna do. And I believe the best course would be a re-upload of the Republic, cutting the federal government by about 97%. Why stop there? Why would you cut a cancer out and leave 3% to grow back? Because it's not the cancer. The globalists came and took it over. People blame the Republic mm. for what's there. No, That's not a Republic. No, no, That's I, a UN globalist fortress. If you leave 3%, the same forces will be there to take advantage of it and grow it back into a force but, of But oppression. you need the balance of the two sides against each other, separation of powers. They will also go into the states and take those over. The balance of power is that we fill the vacuum with self-governance. And that's the paradigm shift. That's where that comes in, sir, where people are able to say, I am a free, beautiful, independent human being. I am not going to allow I know, but when we have this level of domestication, when we have this level of domestication, 101 million people, they've gotten us dependent so that it'll be almost impossible to get off of it. I agree. It's like we're a heroin addict, but can we go cold turkey is what I'm well, asking you. I think there are a lot of people who are still going to be dependent on the state governments after what I'm suggesting. The only people I want to pull the rug out from underneath is the NSA and the IRS and a few other absolutely destructive. Well, they're agents. foreign agents. Their leadership does need to be arrested. Absolutely. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. and, and if we pull the rug out from underneath them, I have no problem with that. But I'm not talking about a change in the actual mechanisms of governance. We'd still be living under state governments that provide the you know illusion of stability that you're talking about that would give the sheep, if you will, that comfort and that protection. Protection, but they would see it on a much less corrupt, on a much more local level where they have the ability to change. And if and one state fell to tyranny, you could run to another. Absolutely. Yeah, that's the problem of global government is it's one yes. giant ring yes. ruling them and all. That's, that's the question. Which direction do you want to go in, sir? Greater concentrations of power or lower? Do you want to bring it back to the individual? And if we go in that direction, compromise in, in, in a, in a temporary well, I want to take the federal government is, back over and I want to bring the people to justice that have taken the country over. Believe me, that'll send a very strong message. I'm, I'm a little, as much as I share your passion for that justice, I'm more concerned with the progress that we need to make right now as a species and get past this idea of central authority in the first place. But if you compromise in, in, in uh, you know, in the short term, you're going to get, uh, you know, in All right. All right. Well, listen, the listen, you did the provocative loading the shotgun. You have a lot of courage down there. I understand you want to be smart and leave it nebulous for legal reasons, but we got you on to talk about that specifically. Yes, uh, I mean, talk about why you decided to do it. Cause some will try to say it's a blue screen does not look like a blue screen to me. You you can hear the birds tweeting and the wind blowing on the microphone. Uh, I mean, if it is fake, you had Stanley Kubrick out there helping him.
Well, that might just be the case, but no, it was a real shotgun. It was loaded and it was racked and, and had a round in the chamber in Freedom Plaza in Washington, D.C., in between the White House and the Capitol. And if anything, I, I did it at this point simply for follow through for the sake of my own credibility to show that I was willing to follow through with committing that particular act of civil disobedience on Independence Day. And a lot of people didn't understand this. A lot of people attacked me. A lot of it was government trolls. And we've seen the patterns of. Oh, it's easy behavior. for people that yeah. are on the bench to criticize those in the arena. Of course. And uh, you, I, I'm sure you understand the, the exact same thing from your personal experience. But I want people to understand that this year, we simply didn't have the numbers for the march to get a critical mass in D.C. And with my arrest on, on May 18th in, in Philadelphia, uh, to have an event that was based on an open carry march crossing a border dependent on a single organizer was not wise. And so for those reasons, I decided to make it about the 50 state capitals instead. And, and I appreciate your recap of that because it was an incredible success. We still have videos coming in from all over the place but now it's time to plant the flag for next year and alex i know a lot of people in your audience will join us in this and i hope you will endorse it too because it's going to happen with or without me now when we invite anybody to join us who for whatever reason wants to end the fed entirely to join us on independence day of next year we're going to be doing the same route from arlington cemetery across memorial bridge sure. down independence avenue around the capitol and the supreme court up pennsylvania avenue around the white house back down constitution avenue but this time it's not about guns and it really wasn't ever about guns as much as it was about the monopoly of force that the government has over the citizens and wanting to put it in its place but now it's time to build this critical mass and i appreciate the opportunity to make this pitch and appeal to you and your audience because i know a lot of people in your audience are with me on this point philosophically and tactically that it's time to say let's end the federal government let's call for nothing less let's make i hear no you i just think you do it a favor voice. calling it the federal government it really is a foreign alien banking combine fair enough i, I mean it, it, i just i just want all to try to get reason, america all the more back reason to not compromise all the more reason to give no quarter all the more reason to take it down to zero percent Because there's a war on for your mind. That has been our motto here at InfoWars for my 18 years of battle against the globalist. And now we see the open announcements of global, private, corporate tyranny over our governments. That's what the New World Order is. It's an unaccountable private combine of organized crime engaged in corporate takeovers of nation states. And the conscious attempt to abolish basic rights and fundamental liberties. Infowars.com is not just leading the charge against this here in the U.S. or North America. We are leading the charge worldwide. And that's because our listeners, our viewers, our supporters, fellow freedom lovers like you across the planet resonate with our message of liberty and telling it like it is. And that's why for the last two years especially, I have thrown everything I've got, my time, my energy, our backup capital, everything into really trying to awaken the sleeping giant that is humanity. And that's why the July issue that just came in a few days ago is so important. We've already sold about half the stock we have of it at cost in groups of 10 up to 100 in bulk. It covers the entire NSA spy grid, how it ties in worldwide, how it's not about stopping terrorists, but about suppressing and dominating and controlling the free press and political opposition. And in this magazine, we don't just have three free bumper stickers like I did a few months ago. We have 10 bumper stickers, four full-size ones with amazing messages guaranteed to get people thinking like America has been occupied by globalist forces, Infowars.com. Listen to Alex Jones at Infowars.com. Infowars.com, forbidden information. Listen to Alex Jones, Infowars.com. And then on top of it, six medium-sized bumper stickers with the message as well. These are key to post in legal and lawful areas on your book bag, your computer, your car, or to give friends and family. I have printed 500,000 of these bumper stickers. Only half of this month's run of magazines has them. So when you purchase them in bulk or you're a 12-month subscriber, you will get the special issue. And I can't afford to do this every month, so it's going to be quite a while 
until we do this again. Please take advantage of this. Buy them in bulk and give them to your friends and family and encourage them to get these bumper stickers out because with 500,000 stickers, we can reach tens of millions of people with the message of truth. They want to collectivize us. They want to bankrupt us. They want to drive us into their arms to control us. They want to dumb us down. But the sleeping giant that is for humanity is awakening. So I want to thank you all for your support. I want to encourage everybody to go to InfoWarsStore.com and to get a 12-month subscription or to give a gift subscription. Imagine 12 of these coming to your friends or family's door to wake them up. Or to give a gift subscription to the local police department or your local congressman or woman. This is how we're going to affect change, voting with our dollars and voting with our time. Again, visit InfoWarsStore.com today to subscribe, to get the magazine in bulk, or to give a gift subscription, or to give yourself a subscription to wake up friends and family. I am all in. I am committed 110% to not mince words and to not back off and to boldly confront the globalist. And our listeners and supporters, our info warriors, who aren't behind us, they're right beside us. So I want to thank all of you that have supported us in the past, and I want to encourage all of you out there who may be on the fence, that know this information is true, but have been scared to take action. You had better be scared of not taking action and letting this monstrous system come to fruition. Now is the time to commit. Now is the time to say which side of history you're on. Now is the time to stand against the globalist and the new world order. And regardless of whether you get this July issue, this July 4th resistance to tyrants issue, spread the word about liberty, resist corruption in your area. Millions of us doing little things can move mountains together. I'm Alex Jones signing off for InfoWars.com and the InfoWars team.